All right, welcome back. And today we are going to talk about the Skechers Speed TRL. Ooh, Skechers, you almost had me. You almost had me until you didn't. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It's been a hot second since I've been here doing a video and today we're back with another shoe review, another trail shoe review by Skechers. And today we're talking about the Skechers Go Run Speed TRL. Not Total Request Live? Nope, this is trail shoe. So check that out. Check this the outer, the sole here, the upper. We're gonna go through all this stuff here and talk about how it felt on my <clears throat> trail marathon attempt. Uh, we'll talk about that, why I did that in a second. But anyway, let's go to some of the specifications of the shoe as we always do to start this off. Oh, 8.2 ounces, that's all I gotta say. 8.2 ounces for a trail shoe. That is like a three ounce racing flat. 8.2 ounce trail shoe is oh, virtually unheard of. Hoka Ona Ona has one. The Jaws is a very light shoe. Uh, but there's not a lot of shoes out there that are in the eight range, but this one is, and uh, it's got a lot of stuff going on in there for 8.2 ounces. So 8.2 ounces, this has a drop, a heel to toe drop of four millimeters. So I believe it's, uh, it's 28 millimeters in the heel, it's gonna be 24, but I think it's actually 26 and 22, if you can verify, I think it's 26 and 22. Um, if I'm wrong, if 26 and 22 is wrong, I will have uh, the correct number down here below in the captions here but very low stack height that's what i'm trying to say here is uh very low which means you're going to be feeling stuff but there are things in here to help you from feeling every nook and cranny on the trail so we'll go into that in a second but first we'll start from the bottom go to the top our outsole this has a little bitty uh, lugs all over it which are pretty nice but we'll talk about some of the issues on uh, some muddy terrain and other loose surfaces that this tread has so there are a lot of little well evenly spaced out lugs here and made by Goodyear so you know it's gonna be durable uh, every shoe that I've had that has Goodyear on it, it turns out to be a very durable uh, rubber uh, for the outsole it has a case here very durable got a bunch of miles on this and the little tiny textures even aren't gone. That helps that I'm running on trails more than the road because the road actually rubs away things more than on trail. But regardless, it's great. It's even got a little bit of a rocker going on here on this outsole. So it's got a nice, helps with that uh, you to transition from heel or midfoot to the forefoot. And we'll talk about something else going on that's very, very special in this shoe to help with that as well. But it's got a little bit of a rocker as well. So, got a couple of little exposed things here that's giving you a little secrets happening. That little red area, that's a, that's a secret area here. And this white, I don't understand what's happening here. This actually is little, these little white nubs. Yeah, they're, they're softer than the black nubs. And I, I don't know what they do. And uh, they're already worn out. So, I'm not sure what was going on here. If they're trying to make your toe off a little softer or something. But, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there. That doesn't really do anything. So... Anyway, going to the midsole, we have the awesome, super, super awesome Hyperburst right here. I think you can see it. Midsole here and uh, helps give that nice bouncy feel, a nice soft plush feel, except, except for in this case. With the low stack height of this shoe, the Hyperburst doesn't really feel that squishy and that beautiful, kind of like you would have in the Go Run Rides and the, the Max, the Go Run Ride Max. Uh, the Max 4 especially has a very high uh, stack height and a lot of that go um, hyperburst in it. This has a low stack height, so the hyperburst in here does help a little bit, but you're still going to be taking a pounding over a long period of time, which I did on my marathon attempt. So, moving into the midsole some more, we have the hyperburst here and it travels on through, but then we have this. This is the secret right here. See this red line here? That's not just a line, that is a plate, that is a plastic plate for helping with, uh, it helps give some rigidity, but it's a propulsion plate, kind of like you would find in the Nike Vaporflies, 
the foot percents and alpha flies, the next percents, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a, a plate to help with propulsion. So it's very rigid. And then, so you have a heel or midfoot strike, then you have your toe off and it's a very rigid area, but it helps with springiness to take off and race faster. Cause this is a racing shoe. This is not one of your jog around type of shoe. Uh, at 8.2 ounces, there is not a lot of protection for the long run or for just jogging around. This is for racing, this is for going fast all out. So the plate in there also acts as a rock plate so that you are not hitting and feeling every nook and cranny and rock and root and crevice uh, on the trail as you're running. So two purposes to this uh, propulsion plate here, you can see on the other side as well, <clears throat> is form as a rock plate and as a uh, speed taker offer has a propulsion plate as well to help you run faster. So moving on to the, oh, let's talk about the insole a little bit before we get to the outsole. You can see the insole here uh, is there's nothing to it. Uh, I'm going to attempt to take it out because it's not really meant to be taken out. And I'm going to take it out part of the way because it's glued in there. It's not really meant to be taken out, but you can see it's, it's really just paper thin. Oh, there it goes some more. It's paper thin. It's glued in there. Uh, it's not the meant to really come out. It doesn't have uh, any kind of really contours to it. Uh, this shoe, uh, we'll talk about some of the, some of my, uh, reactions to running in this shoe is there is no arch support. So you must be a very efficient runner to run in this shoe because there is no arch support, uh, per se. So, uh, but the upper does provide a lot of support and we're going to talk about that right now. So the material of this upper is a rip stop mesh and it's very light. It's translucent. It's very strong and breathable. And uh, it goes all the way through here. There's no real overlays, but it's just that, that ripstop mesh all the way through here. And we have a standard lacing system as well, but we have a semi-gusseted tongue to help with a nice secure fit. So you can see on one side it's open and allows when you tighten your shoe to wrap into itself. And the other side is connected to the shoe right here. So it's, it kind of folds in like a burrito. So uh, it gives you a nice, tight, secure fit. Ah, uh, so the translucency of this shoe. I first noticed this when I first put on the shoe with a pair of socks. And so here's the shoe, here's a pair of socks. If you put on a red pair of socks and put them into your shoe in the, in the correct light, which you may not see today, you actually see the color of the sock through the shoe, which I'm uh, not really showing up here in the camera, but trust me, it does. It's very see-through, very light, uh, translucent upper. So um, it's also very breathable and very strong as well. So you're not going to get a lot of rips in here. You can feel it just sounds strong. Uh, around the, the front of the shoe here, you have a little toe bumper here, and then you have like a, a, a protective area here. It provides structure to the upper of the shoe and also provides a little protection for your toes. So if you stub your foot on a rock or root or something like that, it actually protects your foot a little bit. So coming around to the rear now, whoop, over here, we have a very special system here called the lock system. Check that out, lock system. And next, so next to the lock system, you see there's actually a lace here. That lace is not for show. That has actually got function to it. And so what happens is, starting on this side, you can see the lace here, and then it comes around to the other side and comes out here to the other eye right here. And your shoelaces obviously go through here. So when you actually tie your shoe, and you can actually see it open up here. When you actually tie your shoe and you tighten the upper, it actually tightens the heel back to your, your foot and locks your whole foot into the shoe. So you feel like you're like one with the shoe. Now, you have to be careful because a lot of reviewers out there that mentioned this and it happened to me as well. You can't tie your shoe too, too tight because this actually will cause an irritation to your Achilles. If you lock it down too much, it can cause some irritation. And I felt that kind of irritation, like, you know, one and a half, two hours into my run. So uh, definitely gotta be careful of what you do here, but it is a real lock system. You don't need to have like the runner's lock, knot that I would talk about when you tie your, when runners tie their shoes, it's a special way to tie your shoes. You don't need that with this because it's built into the lock system. So that's a real thing and it does really help connect your foot to the shoe. So um, that's the upper, that's the laces. The lacing system is a very uh, standard lacing system 
and we got standard laces. They're round, soft. Uh, I always double knot my shoes, so I never really noticed uh, having problems with uh, having them come untied. So that is going to take care of the upper for this shoe. Uh, no other overlays. It's a nice, strong ripstop mesh system with a semi gusseted tongue. The tongue itself is uh, not too too padded. It's a thicker material, uh, so you can actually tie your shoes pretty good, and you don't feel any binding in your in, in the top of your foot. Um, from a very flimsy tongue, so it's not padded, but it's not flimsy either. It's just a nice, sturdy, strong, thicker material, but not padded. Uh, it helps keep the weight down, of, of course. So, how did I feel about these shoes when I ran in them? So, the story here is I attempted to run a trail marathon on a course that's moderately technical uh, near me. It's just a three-mile loop around a lake, and I put the shoes on and tried them out and they felt uh, really light and they felt really responsive and so I went out on my run and I started running at like a 720, 730 pace and I felt great. Usually when I do trail runs they're closer to the 8 minute mile pace but I was flying. I felt like I was flying in these shoes. They felt wonderful. The, um, the propulsion plate here really helped move me forward. The rock guard, I didn't, wasn't feeling every little root and rock with the with the rock guard. Um, when I got on the road, there's actually a little road section that I run on that was part of this course. It's a very short road section, it's like 0.3 miles. And I was flying, I was doing like 630 pace or even a little bit better sometimes every, every time I did a loop around. And uh, I really felt the uh, propulsion here as I was on the road and I was like, man, this, this is fantastic. I'm gonna fly through this marathon. It felt great until about mile 15 of the of the course and uh i started getting tired i started getting fatigued i started not running as efficiently as you need to run in these shoes and i started feeling a lot of pain uh every time i felt like i was getting a jarring pain like every time i put my foot down i felt like i was just banging against concrete and i was getting no cushion at all from the shoes because of this low stack height in these shoes. So it started putting a lot of uh, pain into my legs on the shoes. And in fact, it got to the point that um, since there is no arch support in these shoes per se, that I was actually feeling electrical shocks in my plantar fascia in this area here on my foot uh, because my arches, my plantar fascia was getting stretched out, my arches are getting stretched out and starting to collapse because there is no arch support and my form was starting to get worse and I was not running nearly as efficient as you need to in these shoes. So the, the combination of no arch support, very little cushion in, in these shoes, I was starting to get banged up. And by mile 20, mile 21, in that area, I was pretty much done racing myself. Um, and I just, I kind of pretty much bagged it. I jogged around a little bit and finished my run. And uh, that was that, that was about it. So uh, this shoe, my recommendation for this shoe is for anybody that has a really efficient running form uh, and it can be used for, if a really, really, really efficient, you can use it for a marathon, but I would use this myself as a semi-efficient, semi-faster runner. Uh, I would use this for a cross-country race, definitely 5K, 10K, yes, definitely. Uh, I would use this for a half marathon trail race. And um, the other thing I noticed um, when I was doing my run, there were some areas that were looser, like some looser sand, and then there was areas that were packed dirt, but, and that was fine when this was packed dirt. But as the sun started beating on the packed dirt, it was below freezing, uh, it started to thaw out the dirt, and it had like this slimy layer of mud that was forming, and I was sliding all over the place on a slimy layer of mud with these lugs because the lugs are not very deep or pronounced. Uh, they're not like five millimeters, they're more like a two, three millimeter lug. And uh, I was sliding around a little bit and I also slid on some roots as well. So I, I might would recommend this for a uh, packed gravel, packed dirt or frozen conditions, uh, half trail, half marathon is what I would recommend for that. So, um, or if you're doing a lot of climbing, uh, if it's not downhill, no, uh, you'd be pounding yourself. But a lot of uphill with a nice light shoe like this, yes. Uh, so that's my recommendation for the shoe, and that's my thoughts on it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it felt it was insightful. Leave a big thumbs up on the video. Leave a comment down below. What I want to know is what is the best 
trail ultra marathon shoe. So I'm looking for the best shoe for, for running fast in an ultra marathon. That's what I'm looking for. I need your help. Leave comments down below. You think you give me good, some good uh, results? I will try the shoes. I will buy the shoes. I will review the, review the shoes and tell you how I feel about them. So leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And until next time, peace.